In this video lecture, we're going to discuss the idea of precedence, which for our purposes is a formal set of rules that determines which operators execute before or after which other operators. Okay, let's get started. So we've recently taken a look at a handful of the most commonly used operators in Java. Then the logical question arises, what if we've got a statement or an expression which involves multiple operators? Which ones execute in which order? Fortunately for us, this is a dilemma which has already been sorted out by the fields of mathematics and programming using well-established rules of operator precedence. Precedence in Java or any other programming language is the determination of which operations get evaluated before which other operations. You might remember an acronym from some earlier math class called PEMDAS or Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally, which stands for parentheses, exponentiation, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. In basic math, this is just a formal statement of the relative priority order of operations. Java has a more extensive list of operators than just these, so as a result, it has a more extensive list of precedence rules. You can find a reasonably full precedence list in Appendix B of your textbook, or the complete and official list at this URL on Oracle's website, which is also given in the current Canvas lecture module. Here's a simple example of precedence from a programming perspective. Suppose you have two quarters, three dimes, and two nickels, and you want to calculate how many pennies this is worth. You could write an expression in Java using a bunch of numerical literals that look like this. But note that you have multiplication and addition operators within the same right-hand side expression. So, in what order should these operators be evaluated? Using precedence, this statement is unambiguous. Because multiplication has higher precedence than addition, we first evaluate the multiplication operations, and then the addition operations, left to right in each case, leaving us with the correct and intended answer of 90 pennies. Now, as an aside, in general, we would never want to write code like this with a bunch of hardwired literals. Instead, we always prefer to work symbolically, that is, with variable names representing each of these quantities. Let's take a look at our example file to see how we would better refactor this problem. Please take a moment now to pause this video and view the short code walkthrough video for Operators Precedence 1.java. Open up this file in JGrasp so you can follow along. You'll find this example in the Example Source Code module on Canvas. Come back to this video when you are finished. So here's a starting Operator Precedence table. If you look at the one in your textbook appendix, or at the one on Oracle's site, you'll see a much more extensive table than this with all of Java's operators. However, this one is good enough to get started with because it contains only the operators we've introduced so far. We see that multiplication and division take higher precedence over addition and subtraction, so it's what we would expect from a first glance. Notice also that the various increment and shortcut operators we've discussed also have their own places in this table, ahead of or after the standard mathematical operators. Some other inspection of this table tells us that parentheses have the highest priority and are always evaluated first. This means we can use parentheses to explicitly force any order of execution we wish. After that, operators have top to bottom priority order, and if two operators in the same row appear in an expression, they are evaluated in the order in which they appear in any statement. So looking back at the precedence table, operators are evaluated top to bottom and generally from left to right. Also note that any operation involving the assignment operator, these ones here, are always evaluated last and in right to left order. This means that the right hand side of any assignment operation is always evaluated fully and then assigned to the left hand side value. Let's take a look at another precedence example. Suppose we have the original expression x divided by 2y for the values x equals 100 and y equals 25. If we implemented this equation as shown here, we get a result that is completely unintended but absolutely correct by the rules of precedence. Because multiplication and division have the same level of precedence, the division operator is evaluated first, 
followed by the multiplication, which gives us 50 times 25. But that isn't at all what we wanted. It's as if we were evaluating this expression instead of the one we wanted. If we want to be more specific about our results, we need to incorporate some parentheses into our original expression to force the evaluation order that we intend. Take a look at the following example to see what we mean in code. Please take a moment now to pause this video and view the short code walkthrough video for Operators Precedence2.java. Open up this file in JGRASP so you can follow along. You'll find this example in the Example Source Code module on Canvas. Come back to this video when you are finished. In summary, I have two items of general guidance regarding precedence. First of all, you need to understand how it works because you will see code that relies upon it and you need to be able to decipher that program's intentions. But my better advice would be, for any new code that you write, don't rely upon precedence, but rather be very clear and specific up front about your intentions by using parentheses. If you wrote the code and you know what you meant, don't make everyone else figure it out using precedence. Just make it clear through the explicit and liberal use of parentheses. And with that, we conclude this discussion of precedence.